Hello. Good morning to all. Very, very good morning to all of you. Today, here is third lecture of the series, and that is completely based on basic pathology. That is part one of the basic pathology. It will include cell injury, cell adaptation, healing, repair, edema. Okay. So now we are going to start with this lecture. So points will be discussed today. That is cell injury, adaptation, healing, repair, and edema. First of all, why to learn this all basic pathology? When we are Ayurvedic students, why to learn all this basic pathology? We are holding the degree of Bachelor of Ayurvedic Medicine in Surgery. So whatever, whatever science is there, whatever in practice science, which is evidence-based is there, it's our moral responsibility to learn that science as well as our all Acharya had told us that every science we should go through, we should take knowledge of every stream of life sciences and we should be able to keep our mind open towards that knowledge and we have to utilize at the time of patient healing. So on that basis, we have to, it's our duty that every student of BMS should have knowledge of basic pathology. So today we are going to start with the basic part of this pathology and again I'm telling you whatever information or whatever notes are included in these all slides, those are very much important for all of you for paper writing, understanding and practice as well as clinical point of view. Ayurveda Madhe Apad Vis Gun Bhagitle and all Ayurvedic physiology runs by pathology also on the basis of that 20 gunas, that is Gurga Dibu. If you will go through keenly this all pathology concepts, all systematic systemic pathology concept, basic pathology concept, then you will find or you will come into the confusion that whatever, whatever is happening under this uh, pathology or modern uh, physiology. Everything is getting covered by our Gurvadigum. Means when you are saying it is destruction, it is when you are saying it is healing, it is also includes Ayurvedic karma. So everywhere you can correlate with Ayurvedic Guna Pradhan or Guna Karma concept. So during explanation of this entire topic, timely I will give you what are the appropriate examples of that particular topic which are correlated with Ayurvedic terms, okay, or Ayurvedic theory. So uh, we are going to start with cell injury. So what is cell injury? Types, causes, targets, and what is cellular swelling? That we are going to see. So, cell injury or cell damage, it means changes to any cell by stress. The stress will be external or internal. Means, cell damage is a variety of changes of stress that is a, that a cell suffers due to external as well as internal environmental changes. Many times what happens, cell Injury happens by its own. Few times or many times it is by external factors. So external and internal environmental changes gives the stress which cause cell injury. Okay, so types. There are two types, reversible, irreversible. Reversible means that cell can come back to pavilion and irreversible means per some permanent changes or death may occur. Okay. So cell death is relative to both the length of exposure to the harmful stimulus. How long that cell is getting exposure of that stimulus, in what quantity cell getting that exposure, these two factors 
will define the severity of the damage by that change. So, reversible and irreversible are the two types of cell injury. Okay. So, damage. What type of dam damage will happen or occur? Some cell damage can be reversed once the stress is removed. But other cases, what will happen? After removing also that stress, cell will not come into its original position. So that is irreversible. Degree of injury will remain as it is in few cases. But when full function returns to the cell, it is called as reversible. Okay. So causes are physical, chemical, infectious, biological, nutritional, or immunological factors. So these are very important by exam point of view. See, hit impaired nutrient supply, metabolic, chemical agent, microbial agent, immunologic agent, and genetic factors. We all are aware regarding these all causes, just we are re, uh, revising few things. So I included this important point in this particular slide. So causes are hit. For example, the cell can get damaged by literally cooking or coagulating their contents. Nutrient supply, such as lack of oxygen or glucose, Metabolic is hypoxia, deprivation of oxygen, as well as deprivation of blood supply, that is ischemia. Chemical agents, any chemical agent can affect on the cell. Microbial agent, immunologic agent, allergy or autoimmune diseases, and genetic factors such as sickle cell, anemia, and Down syndrome. So what is the main target of cell injury when these changes happen or when this damage happens? It is DNA and the cell membrane. Uh, beginning of this uh, discussion, let me know, uh, do you remember what are the parts of cells? Yes, cell membrane, Golgi apparatus, cytoplasm, mitochondria, center, centriole and few more things are there so whenever there is an external pressure or external damage or you can say when there is an external force what happens the main factors which are getting affected of say is dna and the cell membrane so what happens dna damage when uh, dna damage takes place in human cell both metabolic activities and environmental factors Means environmental factors means uh, radiations like ultraviolet light or other radiation. They can cause DNA damage. And resulting in this, 1 million individual molecular lesions per cell per day may happen. Membrane damage happens. What happens when membrane uh, damage takes place? Because membrane is very important for selective reabsorption. So it affects on cell electrolytes. That is calcium when con constantly increased induces apoptosis. Then microchondrial damages. This ATP formation and uh, entire ATP cycle may get disturbed. Then ribosome damage, damage to the ribosomal and cellular proteins such as protein misfolding will into apoptotic exam uh, enzyme activation. What is apoptotic? enzyme activation we will see afterwards okay then in sequence we are coming to cellular swelling so cellular swelling when happens it occurs due to cellular hypoxia which damages sodium potassium membrane pump and it is reversible when causes eliminated it is the first manifestation of almost all forms of injury, injury to cells when it affects many cells in an organ. So, first of all, what are the changes in cellular swelling, pallor, 
turgor and weight changes that is increase in weight of the organ it causes some pallor turgor means it is a force within the cell that pushes the plasma membrane against the cell wall okay it is very important to keep the pressure internal pressure of the cell as well as shape these things are interrelated so cellular swelling is what it causes some pallor increased turgor and increasing weight of the organ then what happens the ultra structure changes of reversible cell injury includes blebbing blunting distortion of microvilli loosening of intercellular attachments mitochondrial changes dilation of the endoplasmic reticulum do you remember what is the normal cell structure so that cell structure it get change in this way bulbing is means bulb is a bulge of the plasma membrane of a cell then what happens blunting happens so many times in degrees distortion of microvilli mitochondrial changes and dilatation of endoplasmic reticulum on microscopic examination of the cellular swelling what happens some clear vacuoles may be seen within the cytoplasm okay how they seen is they represent distended and pinch of segments of the endoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum and this pattern of non lethal injury is sometimes called as hydropic changes or vacuolar degeneration it is a severe form of cloudy swelling it occurs with hypokalemia due to vomiting or diarrhea okay hypokalemia means what it is electrolyte imbalance your potassium okay yes then next is whenever there is a vomiting or diarrhea what happens cell get shrink or what happens with the cell can anybody tell yes you can you can on your mic you can un unmute yourself what happens when vom vomiting and diarrhea happens can anyone tell can anyone share so that ayurvedic explanation or Ay ayurvedic theoretical correlation i can explain uh, in this context what happens hello okay i will explain afterwards okay okay no issues we have to i think continue with this lecture and at the end of this topic i will explain everything okay so um, where i was okay so uh, it is cellular swelling happens it is due to vomiting or diarrhea so it is the because of vomiting and diarrhea whatever injury happens to the cell the first result is cellular swelling and it swelling means under microscope what changes uh, one can observe it is small clear vacuoles may be seen within the cytoplasm and distended pinched off segments of endoplasmic reticulum and vacuolar degeneration okay so what are the cellular changes cell has been damaged or it's unable to adequate metabolism fat small vacuoles of fat accumulate and become dispersed within cytoplasm or mild fatty changes or depending on the cause and severity of lipid accumulation and this fatty changes when they are in mild stage they are generally reversible we are uh, like fatty changes known as fatty degeneration or fatty metamorphosis or fatty structures yes so this is regarding mainly mild fatty changes and comes under cellular injury yes then the next part is necrosis what is necrosis it is a form of cell injury which results in premature death of cell in living tissue by autolysis necrosis is caused by factors external to the cell 
or tissues such as infection, toxins, trauma. Okay. In contrast, necrosis and apoptosis, these are two types of reversible, irreversible. So apoptosis is a naturally occurring program and targeted cause of cellular death. Okay. While apoptosis often provides beneficial effect to the organisms. Necrosis is what almost always detrimental and can be fatal. Now, just we will go through necrosis. Okay, yes, irreversible changes. These are the four steps. These are the four stages. Then, these are the types of necrosis that is, coagulative necrosis, liquefactive necrosis, cases necrosis, or seizures necrosis, fat necrosis, fibroid necrosis, gangrenous necrosis, and apoptosis. Apoptosis is the, yeah, this is the very important regarding pathology point of view. Necrosis also, but when you are going through basic pathology, apoptosis, knowledge of apoptosis is very important. Apoptosis is a naturally occurring program and targeted cause of cellular death. It is a natural process, okay? While apoptosis often provides beneficial effects to the organism. What are benefits? Okay. The cell death of superfluous or potentially harmful cells in the body. What are potential harmful cells or superfluous? So apoptosis, what happens? It is an energy dependent process mediated by proteolactic enzymes called called caspases which trigger cell death through the cleaving of specific proteins in the cytoplasm and nucleus. So how what is the mechanism of apoptosis? What happens is, say it is a natural death, okay? See, so it is a natural program, one can say, which targeted cause to the cellular death. So dying says what happens, what are the stages? They get shrink and condense into apoptotic. Yes, shrink and condense into apoptotic bodies. The cell surface is altered, rapid phagos phagocytosis by macrophages or neighboring cells. Then what happens? Main and important thing is, unlike necrotic cell death, neighboring cells are not damaged by this process. Okay? And 50 to 70 billion cells die each day due to this process. Inhibition of apoptosis can result in a number of cancers, means rate when increases and abnormally increases, then it is leads to cancers, autoimmune diseases, inflammatory diseases, and viral infection. But what is the main features of this apoptosis process? What happens? The dying cell shrinks and condense into apoptotic bodies. Cell surface get altered, which lead to rapid phagocytosis by macrophages or neighboring cell. But the neighboring cell are not damaged, getting damaged, okay? 50 to 70 billion cells die each day due to apoptosis. Now we will go through repair. When we say cell injury, repair is very important. When the cell is damaged by the body, when cell is damaged, the body will try to repair or replace the cell to continue its normal function. If a cell dies, the body will remove it, okay? And replace it with another functioning cell. You know, there are so many other types of cells and as per their functions, okay? We have been since our uh, 9, 10 NCRT or you can say from our 11th biology uh, chapter, we know what are the type of cells and their different functions. So if a cell dies in the body, body what it will do? What body will do? It will remove it and replace with another functioning cell or fill this gap with connective tissue. Why? To provide structural support for the remaining cells. Structural support is always important. The motto of the repair process is to fill a gap caused by the damaged cell to regain structural continuity. Okay? So, normal cell try to regenerate the damaged cell, but this cannot always happen. Okay? So, the asexual reproduction is what repair cells. Then we come to regeneration. Regeneration of parenchymal cell or the functional cell of an organism the body can make more cells to replace the damaged cells, keeping the organ or tissues intact 
and fully functional means functional abnormality and structural abnormality you have to fill up okay then replacement regeneration that after replacement when a cell cannot be regenerated the body will replace it with what with stromal connective tissue to maintain tissue organ function okay structure and function is important so rehabilitation of the cell the stromal cells are the cells that support the parenchyma cell in any organ fibroblast immune cells pericytes and inflammatory cells are the most common type of stromal cells okay so as per their types they support as per their function and requirement they support the parenchymal cells in any organ for healing placement right next so uh, we will go through in short what are the biochemical changes in cellular injury first is atp depletion what happens reduction in intracellular atp can have a number of functional and morphological cons consequences during cell injury then failure of the atp dependent pumps what happens resulting into in a net influx of sodium calcium ion and osmotic swelling then atp depleted cells begin to undertake anaerobic metabolism to derive energy from glycogen which is known as glycogenolysis the consequent decrease in the intracellular ph of the cell arises which mediate harmful enzymatic processes an early clumping of nuclear chromatin then occurs known as kinosis and leads to eventual cell death so this is all about cellular injury now i will explain ayurvedic part and its uh, you know role of ayurveda in this cell injury cell injury madhe kay hota cell injury manje kay damage damage means what it is by some factors those factors are what internal and external factors ek tar cell damage je hota te naturally it is a part of our physiological process and second is pathological process means what whenever external trauma or any chemical uh, cause or any infection or anything is caused for cell injury what happens there are certain changes happen there are some changes happen in the cell inside and those all changes are related with the pressure the time duration the quality or the nature of the external stress it is about external stress and now we will talk about internal thing that is internal damage to keep that uh, entire organ system or your uh, system of your body clean and neat to avoid all infection some type of natural destruction is always important so jeva apan ropan kriya mhanto kiwa lekhan kriya mhanto kiwa healing kartana mahatvachi goshta je shlakshanatva je snigdhatva apekshit asto he snigdhatva he shlakshanatva he ropan ani jeva ti injury replaced houn javes navin kai form honar asto kiwa repair hona avashyak astya त्या स्टेजला होणारं रोपण त्याच्या अगोदर आवश्यक असणार लेखन या सगळ्या प्रक्रिया या सेल इंजुरीच्या ज्या सगळ्या स्टेजेस आहेत त्यांना कोरिएट करतात जिथे जिथे सेल हिलिंग हे डिले होत तिथे तिथे त्या हिलिंगसाठी आवश्यक असणारी जी काही कर्म आहेत आणि त्या कर्मांच्या आवश्यक जे गुण आहेत त्यांचा अभाव असणं अपेक्षित आहे त्यामुळे त्या अभाव भरून काढायला किंवा ते कर्म भरून काढायला त्याच्या किंवा तो अभाव भरून काढायला त्याच्या विपरीतच जे हे जे आहेत गुणांचा आणि कर्मांचं आपण आयोजन केलं पाहिजे ओके सो नेक्स्ट इज सेल्युलर अडाप्टेशन सेल्युलर अडाप्टेशन इज सेल्युलर अडाप्टेशन रेफर्स टू द चेंजेस मेड बाय सेल इन रिस्पॉन्स टू अडवर्स ऑर व्हेरी इन्व्हॉर्मेंटल चेंजेस सो चेंजेस मेड बाय सेल टू रिस्पॉन्स ऑर रिस्पॉन्स टू अडवर्स और वेरिंग इन्वॉर्मेंटल चेंजेस मीन्स देर आर सम फिजिओलॉजिकल अँड सम आर पॅथोलॉजिकल सो देर आर मेन फोर टाईप्स एट्रॉफी हॅपोट्रॉफी हॅपोप्लासिया मेटाप्लासिया सो ऑट्रॉफी इज वॉट इट इज एट्रॉफ एट्रॉफाइड सेल एव्हरी वन नोज इट इज डिस्क्रीज डिक्रीज इन सेल साईज अँड इफ 
though cells in an organ undergo atrophy the entire organ will decrease in size okay so the types of atrophy are physical atrophy and pathological atrophy so physical atrophy example is thymus atrophy during early human development and pathological atrophy is what skeletal muscle atrophy is a common pathologic adaptation to skeletal muscle disuse so tissue and organs are specially susceptible to atrophy include skeletal muscle cardiac muscle and brain as well as secondary sex organs ती क्षयाची जी अवस्था असते ती क्षयाची अवस्था त्याच्या कार्यातल्या जे महाभूत जी काही इन्वॉल्व आहेत त्या महाभूतांच्या कॉम्बिनेशन जे आहे व्यपदेशस्तू भूय असा या ज्ञानाने त्याच्या तरतमतेनुसार किंवा त्यातल्या महाभूतांच्या संघटनानुसार त्यांच्या अधिक्यानुसार त्यांच्या अनुबंधानुसार तरतमतेत आपल्याला दिसून येत नाही ओके सो पांच महाभूतिक संघटन त्यांची कार्य त्यांचे गुण त्यांची कार्य आणि त्यांची तरतमता इज व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट ड्युरिंग दिस सेल अडॉप्टेशन टॉपिक इन दिस बाय दॅट टॉपिक पॉइंट ऑफ व्ह्यू इट्स व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट ओके सो हायपरट्रॉफी हायपरट्रॉफी इज अन इन्क्रीज इन सेल साईज अट्रॉफी इज अ श्रिंकेज हायपरट्रॉफी इज इन्क्रीज इन सेल साईज इन इफ इनफ सेल ऑफ अन ऑर्गन हायपरट्रॉफी द होल ऑर्गन विल इन्क्रीज इन साईज so it involve an increase in intercellular protein as well as cytosol that is intracellular protein so what happens when cell size increase or volume increase what it indicates or what it involves increase in intracellular protein as well as cytosol and other cytoplasmic components for example adipocytes okay means fat cells may expand in size by depositing more lipid within cytoplasmic vessels so in human adults increase in body fat tissues occurs mostly by increase in the size of adipocytes not by increase in numbers of it. so size and numbers these both things are different pathology is different physiological changes are different so increase in the number is always pathology size so size increase in the size of adipocytes is different and increase in the number of adipocytes is different so causes are hypertrophy may be caused by mechanical signal or tropical signal okay so physiological causes what is a example is skeletal muscle with sustained weight bearing exercises in gym when you are doing like you know increasing weight exercises what happens it is yes then pathological example of pathological hypertrophy is in cardiac muscle as a result of hypertension okay so adipocytes so illustration it is very important uh, in present era because nowadays lipids their cycles and everything is very important fat fat deposition uh, filtration everything now is more in the picture for clinical practices so i would like to explain this few slides regarding illustration of the adipocytes of different sizes in response to dietary excess energy intake what happens adipocytes adapt by increase storage of lipids resulting in cellular hypertrophy so what happens when cellular hypertrophy occurs due to excess intake what happens increase storage of lipids then hyperplasia hyperplasia is an increase of number of cells what is number of cells it is the result of increased cell mitosis or division how it will happen increase of number of cells by cell mitosis or division yes so types are physiological and pathological so physiological hyperplasia is compensatory and hormonal everyone knows that compensatory hyperplasia permits permit tissue and organ regeneration okay it occurs to a lesser extent in bone cartilage and smooth muscle okay and hormonal is what estrogen dependent uterine cell undergoes hyperplasia and hypertrophy following pregnancy these are the two uh, practical examples of physiologic hyperplasia and then pathologic hyperplasia 
Hyperplasia may be a sign of abnormal or precancerous because it is always related with numbers. So number of cells, so cell division increases. So when it is a pathologic hyperplasia, hyperplasia may be sign of abnormal or precancerous changes. It is called pathologic hyperplasia. Okay. But it can also due to the growth of completely normal cells also. Many times, so metaplasia. Metaplasia occurs when a cell of a certain type is replaced by another cell type, which may be less differentiated. It is reversible process, thought to be caused by stem cell programming. You know, everyone, stem cell. Stem cell are found in epithelia and embryonic mesenchyme of connective tissue. So metaplasia. When occurs when a cell of a certain times uh, certain type is replaced by another cell type. Okay, so example is what the changes associated with respiratory tract in response to inhalation of irritant or smoke. The bronchial cell converts from mucus secreting ciliated columnar epithelium to non ciliated squamous epithelium, incapable of secreting mucus. Longer time, longer time. These are these changes are associated with. Respiratory tract. Okay, so uh, here is the second example. The most common example of metaplasia is Barrett esophagus. Okay, so next is dysplasia. Dysplasia refers to the abnormal changes in cellular shape, size, as well as or as well as or organization. Right. So dysplasia is not considered a true adaptation. It is a typical hyperplasia. One can say. Tissues prone to dysplasia include cervical and respiratory epithelium, where it is strongly associated with the development of cancer many times. And although dysplasia is reversible if stress persists, then what happens? Dysplasia progresses to irreversible carcinoma. Then we come to edema. Edema is the medical term. It is swelling. Everyone knows. So. Body parts why this was from injury or inflammation. In, in it can affect small area as well as the entire body. So what happens and why happens it? So what are the types that we will go through? Because these are the basic things to be uh, observed to get uh, known, and that after when this basic pathology will get uh, knowledge of this all things that after you that after only you can interpret regarding. The systematic or systemic pathology of every organ, and uh, you can uh, easily diagnose the changes between or the difference between physiology and pathological stages of every system. Okay, so medication, pregnancy, infection, and many other medical problems can cause edema. So edema happens when your small blood vessels leak fluid into nearby region. Simple language. Many times it happens because of prolonged sitting or standing or prolonged certain posture, as well as during menstruation or pregnancy. Okay. So what are the symptoms? It is like fluid retention or swelling. It's build up of fluid in the body tissue. Most commonly, the legs or arms are affected. What happens? What are the symptoms? Skin which feels tight, area may feel heavy, and it affects on mobility. Means what affected joints or area may be become hard to move. Okay. So causes. What are the causes? These are all pathological causes. What are they? Venous insufficiency, heart failure, kidney problems, low protein level, liver problems, deep vein thrombosis, infections, angioedema. Certain medication also causes. Okay, an edema will occur in specific organ as a part of inflammation. Okay, so certain organs develop edema through tissue specific mechanism. Fetal edema. Pedal edema, everyone knows. Many of the times we can see pedal edema in our OPD. Pedema, pedal edema, that is dependent edema of, on legs, is extracellular fluid accumulation in the legs. Okay, this can occur in otherwise healthy people due to hypervolemia or maintaining a standing or seated posture for extended or longer time of period. 
it can occur due to diminish venous return of blood to the heart due to what congestive heart failure or pulmonary hypertension okay so hydrostatic venous pressure or decrease on protein venous pressure these are the causes what happens again or next due to obstruction of lymphatic or venous vessels draining the lower extremity so certain drugs can cause pedal edema also so there are few types of edema which are very important and one can find or be see commonly in our opd that is cerebral edema what do you know pretty we can say cerebral edema is the extracellular fluid accumulation in the brain it can occur in toxic or abnormal metabolic states and conditions such as systemic lupus or reduced oxygen at high altitudes it causes drowsiness or loss of consciousness leading to brain herniation and death so cerebral edema what is pulmonary edema the lung is raised because of obstruction to the removal of blood by the pulmonary veins so it is because of failure of the usually failure of the left ventricle of the heart it can occur in altitude sickness or an inhalation of toxic chemicals also so what it produces shortness of the breath pleural effusion may occur when fluid also accumulates in the pleural cavity okay then what is uh, the other type of edema which we can see in our practices that is cornea of the eye with glaucoma okay severe conjunctivitis or keratitis or after surgery okay so uh, edema surrounding the eyes is called per orbital edema or eye puffiness the per orbital edema or per orbital tissues are most noticeably swollen immediately after waking perhaps as a result of the gravitational redistribution of fluid in the horizontal position so cutaneous edema are most notified spider bites bee stings and skin contact with with what some poisonous factors certain plants and later we can uh, say as or term as contact dermatitis okay so maxedema another cutaneous form of edema is maxedema which is caused by increased deposition of connective tissue so increased tendency of the tissue to hold water within its extracellular space okay so it is because of increasing hydrophilic carbohydrate rich molecules deposited in the tissue matrix okay so this edema forms more easily in dependent areas in the elderly means sitting in the chairs at home or aeroplanes and this is not well explained till but uh it you can observe many times this type of uh, you know edema the other thing is estrogen alter body weight in a part through changes in tissue water contents uh, many of the times we could observe this type of edema okay so next is lymphedema that is abnormal removal of interstitial fluid in the is the caused by failure of the lymphatic system so these are the causes and then we are see these are the causes that is obstruction uh, obstruction form uh pressure from a cancer or enlarged lymph node and it is most commonly due to the failure of the pumping action of the muscle due to immobility these two things are main positive factors so generalized edema it is a rise in hydrostatic pressure occurs in cardiac failure and falls in osmotic pressure occurs in nephrotic syndrome or liver failure so what happens low plasma oncotic pressure is widely cited for the edema of the nephrotic syndrome so uh, what happens many times it is observed that edema may occur before there is any significant protein in the urine or fall in the plasma protein level so most form of nephrotic syndrome are due to biochemical and structural changes in the basement membrane of capillaries in the kidney glomeruli it is related with the penetration thus the resulting increase the permeability that leads to protein in the urine can explain the edema if all other vessels are more permeable as well okay 
so causes what are the causes generalized edemas heart in case of heart congestive heart failure what happens the pumping force of a heart should help to keep a normal pressure within the blood vessels blood vessels but if the heart begins to fail the pressure changes can cause very severe water retention this condition water retention is mostly visible on the legs feet of and feet and ankles but it also collects water also collects in the lungs where it causes a chronic cough okay in case of kidneys another cause of severe water retention is kidney failure where the kidneys are no longer able to filter fluid out of their blood supply and turn into urine kidney disease often start with inflammation case of disease such as nephrotic syndrome or lupus what happens what is visible visible symptom it is swollen leg and ankles then protein protein chain protein attracts water and plays important role in water balance okay in cases of severe protein deficiency what happens the blood may not contain enough protein to attract water from the tissues passes back to the capillaries so this is why starvation often show often shows enlarged abdomen the abdomen is swollen with edema or water retention caused by lack of protein in their diet so this is also a very important point to be noted when you are doing clinical practices when the capillary walls are too permeable protein can leak out of the blood and settle in the tissue spaces it will then act like a magnet for water okay so what is the uh, mechanism uh, we will go through in short there are six factors that is increased hydrostatic pressure reduced collateral or onchoic pressure increased tissue collateral or onchoic pressure uh, increased blood vessel wall permeability obstruction of fluid clearance in the lymphatic system raised hydrostatic pressure often uh, reflex retention of water okay and sodium by kidneys so sterling equation is one of the important thing in this uh, process or uh, in this you know steps of edema so sterling equation okay so now how we can grade edema when it is we can say it is mild both feet and ankle plus one grade okay then moderate both feet plus lower legs plus hands or lower arms and what is severe centralized bilateral pitting edema including both feet leg and arms and hands when you have to take the case taking and you have to mention what is the severity or grade of edema you have to use this standardized grading plus 1 plus 2 and plus 3 okay for this symptoms so types of edema is pitting and non pitting edema is referred to as pitting when after pressure is applied to a small area the indentation persists after the release of the pressure what happens it can be caused by systemic disease pregnancy in some women insect bite varicose vein dermatitis okay and mainly directly it is connected with heart failure non pitting edema is what non pitting edema is observed when the when the indentation does not persist it is associated with such conditions as lymphedema lipedema maxedema okay so edema caused by malnutrition and malnutrition characterized by edema irritability anorexia ulcerating yes ulcerating dermatosis and an enlarged liver with fatty input so these are the group of symptoms for yeah confirmation of yes malnutrition as well as the edema which is caused by malnutrition so what is wound healing so next topic is wound healing in response to an incision or a wound wound healing cascade or unleash cascade is unleash this cascade takes place in four phases what happens first is clot formation hota hai uske baad inflammation occurs uske baad chloroplation and uske baad maturation 
सो क्लॉटिंग फेज क्लॉटिंग क्लॉटिंग फेज में क्या होता है वॉट हैपन इन दैट ओके सो हीलिंग ऑफ अ वूड बिगिन विथ क्लॉट फॉर्मेशन यू नो वॉट इज द प्रोसेस we have learned in our first year there are factors okay so clot formation why to uh, uh, why clot formation is important or what is the um, importance of clot formation to stop bleeding as well as reduce infection by bacteria viruses and fungi so that minimize it minimize the exposure to these external factors okay Clotting is followed by neutrophil invasion, three to twenty-four hours after the wound has been infected. So next is inflammation phase. In the inflammatory phase, macrophages and other phagocytic phagocytic cells kills bacteria. So inflammation. Okay. Divide damaged tissues and release chemical factors such as growth hormones that encourage fibroblast, epithelial cell, and endothelial cell, which make new capillaries to migrate to the area and divide. What are they? Fibroblast, epithelial cell, and endothelial cell. So this this was the inflammation phase. Next is proliferative phase. in the proliferative phase immature granulation tissue containing sperm active fibroblast forms fibroblast what they do fibroblast quickly produces abundant type 3 collagen which fills the defect left by open wound okay so granulation tissues how they move as a wave from the border of the injury towards the center okay so as granulation tissues mature the fibroblast produces less collagen and become more slimly in the appearance they begin to produce the much stronger type 1 collagen some of the fibroblast mature into my myofibroblast which contain the same type of action found in the smooth muscle yes which enables them to contract and reduces the size of the wound it forms covering right so maturation phase maturation phase is what what happens during this phase of wound healing unnecessary vessels form in the granulation tissues are removed by apoptosis and type 3 collagen is largely replaced by type 1 collagen type 1 collagen is very important collagen which was originally disorganized is cross linked and aligned along tension lines this phase can last a year or longer and ultimately a scar made of collagen scar means what vyadhi paschat je kai lakshan nimitta vikruti rahate scar dar ko apan man shakto kanjanya hun gelyanantar milto na scar ultimately a scar made of collagen containing a small number of fibroblast is left so this is all about yes now we will start discussing as per the topic regarding ayurvedic perspective okay so first of all what we have to see and what we uh, what are the important topics see sharira kriya ani rog nirmiti these are two different things prakruti and vikruti okay so prakruti madhe ka yeto prakruti madhe sharira kriya ay roj chaya upachaya upachaya hoto dhatun samade ahe te maintain hona नवीन निर्मित हो जुन जे का शरीर बाहर टाक सो मेटाबॉलिजम शरीर क्रिया या क्रिये मध्य बरेसे सेल शरीर बयाचा पेशी कि शरीर जे टिश्यू सेल पास जे टिश्यू बनता है सगे रोज वेगवेग पद्धति स्ट्रक्चर नुसार प्लेस नुसार जे कई वरायटी फंक्शन है शरीर की फिजिओलॉजी शरीर क्रिया मेंटेन काम 
असं आपण म्हणतो की प्रत्येक सेल हा पांच महाभूतिक आहे त्या पांच महाभूतांमध्ये प्रत्येक महाभूताचं काहीतरी एक रोल आहे ओके जसं अग्नी आकाश काय करतं वाव देतो पोकळे निर्माण करतो वायू चलत तो किंवा कंटिन्युटी ठेवतो प्रोसेस करतो त्याच्यानंतर अग्नी हे ट्रान्सफॉर्मेशन करतं एका फॉर्म मधन सेकंड फॉर्म मध्ये आप हे काय करतं स्निग्धता आणतं कनेक्टिव्हिटी आणि पृथ्वी हे त्या गुरुत्व किंवा स्थैर्यत्व आणत कि तितका वेळ त्या प्रोसिजरला देणं स्थिर राहणं किंवा स्टॅबिलिटी आणणं हे पृथ्वीचं काम आपण इथे एक गोष्ट लक्षात घेतली पाहिजे बॉडीमधले जितके सारे सेल्स आहेत किंवा जेवढे सारे अवयव आहेत त्यांचे जे काही सेल किंवा युनिट आपण पिंडे प्रमाणे या न्याय युनिट आपण म्हणतो ते प्रत्येक युनिट हे पांच महाभूतिक आहे आणि त्या पांच महाभूतिकाचं संघटन हे वेगळं म्हणजे घशाचे सेल आणि नाकाचे सेल नाकाचे सेल आणि फुफ्फुसाचे सेल या प्रत्येकाचं पांच महाभूतिक संघटन हे त्यांच्या कार्यानुसार वेगवेगळं आहे त्यांच्याकडनं जे कार्य अपेक्षित आहे त्यानुसार पांच महाभूतिक संघटन त्यांचं वेगळं आहे जरी ते सगळे मिळून एक स्त्रोतस किंवा एक ऑर्गन किंवा एक सिस्टीम फॉर्म करत असतील तर त्या प्रत्येक पार्टचा रोल वेगळा आहे इथपर्यंत गोष्ट क्लिअर झाली फॉर एक्झाम्पल नासाच्या आतली जी त्वचा आहे इंधन न्यूक्लोज आहे ही नेहमी सिक्रेटिव्ह फेजमध्ये असते त्याच्यामध्ये त्याच्यावर काय असतं म्युकोजमध्ये सिलियटेड एपिथिलियम असतात आणि त्याच्यावर हेअर असतात सो दॅट त्या इकडे महत्वाचं काम काय आहे हवा गाळून आत नेणं आणि एक ठराविक टेम्परेचर मेंटेन करणं सो तिकडे गाळण्यासाठी असणारे सिलियटेड एपिथिलियम हेअर ऍज वेल ऍज तिथे असणारी श्रेष्ठ महत्वाच्या ही सतत स्त्रवत असते म्हणजे अगदी ऍज ऍज फार एज पॉसिबल जे काही बाहेरचे डॅमेज करणारे जे काही फॅक्टर्स आहेत जे काही मायक्रोब्स आहेत हे गाळले जातील किंवा त्या सिक्रेशन मध्ये ते कॅच होतील त्यामुळे तिथे आपाच प्रमाण त्याचप्रमाणे तिथे तेजाचं प्रमाण हे दोन पृथ्वी इतकंच महत्वाचं आहे सो तिथे सतत सिक्रेशन जिथे आहे तिथे आपमहाभूत आपमहाभूत आहे ते पण आपमहाभूत कुठल्या गुणांनी आहे स्निग्धत्व तिथे जास्त आहे अशा पद्धतीने म्हणजे मी एक्झाम्पल दिले तशा पद्धतीने की प्रत्येक सिस्टीम मध्ये प्रत्येक जो अवयव असतो तो अवयव व्यपदेशस्तु भूयसा या पांच महाभौतिक संघटनाच्या न्यायाने त्याचं कार्य सुद्धा तत्पत बघत असतं त्यामुळे पहिल्यांदा आपण जेव्हा बेसिक पॅथॉलॉजीचा विचार करतो तेव्हा या ज्या क्रिया आहेत म्हणजे इंजुरी होणं पुन्हा त्याचं रोपण होणं ते स्वत चय होणं त्याच्यानंतर जो मलभाग निर्मि निर्माण होणं मलभाग फॅगोसायटसिस काढून टाकणं आणि त्याच्यानंतर पुन्हा हिलिंग होणं रिपेअर होणं रोपण होणं या सगळ्या ज्या गोष्टी आहेत ह्या वात पित्त कफ यांच्या योगाने किंवा यांच्या अंडर जे काही त्यांचे गुण आहेत त्यांची कर्म आहेत यांच्यानुसार इथपर्यंत क्लिअर झालं तर आता हा आपल्याला आपलं काम काय असतं जेव्हा आपण आपल्याला बेसिक पॅथॉलॉजी कळते किंवा बेसिक पॅथॉलॉजी मधल्या आपल्याला सगळ्या क्रिया कळतात तेव्हा त्या क्रियांमध्ये कुठल्या पद्धतीचे गुण हे अत्यावश्यक आहेत त्यानुसार त्या त्या प्रकारच्या दोषांचा त्याच्यावर इम्पॅक्ट असतो जिथे तुम्हाला पचन अपेक्षित आहे तिथे तुम्हाला पित्ताचं उष्णत्व आणि तीक्ष्णत्व आवश्यक आहे ओके जिथे तुमचं पचन हॅम्पर होतं तिथे पित्ताचा उष्णत्व आणि तीक्ष्णत्व गुण ऍज वेल ऍज तो उष्णत्व आणि तीक्ष्णत्व मेंटेन करायला जे काही द्रवत्व आणि सरत्व पित्ताच्या नॉर्मॅलिटीच्या अनुषंगाने अपेक्षित आहे या सगळ्या फॅक्टर्सचा मेंटेनन्स इज व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट अँड तो मेंटेनन्स मेंटेन करणं किंवा तो मेंटेनन्स काय म्हणत त्याला तो स्टेबल करणं म्हणजे त्या व्यक्तीसापेक्ष प्रकृती प्रस्थापित करणं तिची शरीरक्रिया ही नॉर्मल ठेवणं ओके जेव्हा जेव्हा शरीरक्रियेचा भाग म्हणून तिथे एक क्षपण होत किंवा तिथे लेखनाची क्रिया होते कारण लेखन ही नैसर्गिक क्रिया आहे शरीर रोज काही ना काहीतरी म्हणजे जे त्याज्य भाग आहे तो काढून टाकत असतो त्याच्यामध्ये मल भाग असतो शरीरातला वेगवेगळ्या प्रकार अन्नाचा मल आहे द्रवरूप अन्नाचा मल आहे त्या खमल आहेत हे सगळं शरीर रोज त्याजेच असतं कारण चयपचय या प्रक्रियेचा भाग म्हणून मलनिर्मिती होत असते सो या सगळ्या ज्या क्रिया आहेत या सगळ्या क्रिया हा शरीराचा भाग आहे परंतु या सगळ्या क्रियांपेक्षा जेव्हा त्यांच्या क्रिया सोडून इतर महत्वाच्या गोष्टी की ज्या जीवनावश्यक गोष्टींना आवश्यक नाही किंवा ज्या विकृतीकडे जातात त्या पॅथॉलॉजीच्या अंतर्गत आणि 
त्या कुठल्या आहेत तर त्या या महत्वाच्या गोष्टी आहेत आणि सेल इंजुरी म्हणा अडॅप्टेशन म्हणा हिलिंग म्हणा रिपेअर म्हणा या सिच्युएशन आहेत की या स्टेजेस आहेत कुठल्याही प्रकारचं भौतिक किंवा मोठ्या स्थूल स्वरूपातील विकृती ही सूक्ष्म स्वरूपामध्ये जेव्हा विकृतीला सुरुवात होते तेव्हा ती कशी होते आणि ती समजून घेण्याच्या या स्टेजेस आहेत त्याच्यामुळे सेल इंजुरी म्हटल्यानंतर त्याचे जे वेगवेगळे प्रकार आहेत रिव्हर्सिबल इ रिव्हर्सिबल रिव्हर्सिबल म्हणजे जेव्हा तुम्ही ती सेल इंजुरीचे जे पॉझिटिव्ह फॅक्टर्स आहेत ते पॉझिटिव्ह फॅक्टर विथड्रॉल केल्यानंतर पुन्हा सेल पूर्वस्थिती देणं ओके हा पूर्वस्थिती देणं हे जितकं एक्सटर्नल फॅक्टरवर अवलंबून आहे तितकंच ते काही अंशी या सेलच्या स्ट्रेंथवर किंवा सेलच्या नेचरवर किंवा सेल कुठल्या प्रकारचं आहे त्याच्यावर सुद्धा हे अवलंबून असत सो तो त्या सेलमधलं जर हो त्या सेलमधलं जर स्निग्धत्व किंवा त्याच त्याचा टॉलरन्स त्याच्यातला परस्परांमधला बांधून ठेवायची जी शक्ती आहे किंवा त्याच्यातला सहननाची शक्ती पृथ्वी महाभूत ते अपमहाभूत की दोन्ही महाभूतांचं जर संघटन जर प्रॉपर असेल तर या हिलिंगला खूप वेगळ्या पद्धतीने आणि चांगल्या पद्धतीने मदत होते सो जेव्हा रिव्हर्सिबल आणि इ रिव्हर्सिबल आपण सेल इंजुरी म्हणतो तेव्हा ज्या सेलमध्ये इंजुरी झाल्यानंतर इ रिव्हर्सिबिलिटी येते त्यांच्या फंक्शनमध्ये त्यांच्या स्ट्रक्चरमध्ये त्यांच्यामध्ये पुन्हा प्रस्थापित करण्यासाठी आपल्याला या महाभूत विचारांचा म्हणजे खूप महत्वाचा उपयोग ट्रीटमेंट पॉइंट ऑफ व्ह्यू होतो सो हे जे डॅमेज चे कॉजेस आहेत ओके किंवा हे जे एजंट्स आहेत जे आपण एक्सटर्नल फॅक्टर म्हणतो हिट मेटाबॉलिझम केमिकल रिएजंट्स मायक्रोबी यांच्यानुसार कुठल्या प्रकारची इंजुरी होते ही म्हणजे एनर्जी जसं आपण म्हणतो की फॉर्म म्हणजे ही कॉन्स्टंट असते ती नेहमी फॉर्म बदलते तसं ज्याप्रमाणे इंजुरी होते त्या प्रमाणातलेच बदल म्हणजे जी केमिकल इंजुरी आहे त्याच्यामुळे होणारे जे काही चेंजेस आहेत सेलमध्ये जी काही फिजिकल इंजुरी आहे त्याच्यामुळे होणारे सेल हे एकमेकांपासून वेगळे असतात आणि या प्रत्येक इंजुरीला त्याच्यापासून निर्माण होणाऱ्या पॅथोलॉजीला जी काही मॅनेजमेंट अपेक्षित आहे ती मॅनेजमेंट सुद्धा डिफर असते आणि ती मॅनेजमेंट डिपेंड्स ऑन कुठल्या प्रकारचे गुण कुठल्या प्रकारचं कर्म डिस्टर्ब झालं आहे दॅट इज व्हेरी मच डिपेंडंट ऑन दिस टाईप ऑफ प्रिन्सिपल्स ओके सो हे झालं चेंजेस बद्दल ओके तो परमनंट जेव्हा इरिव्हर्सिबल हे होते म्हणजे कॉकॅलेटिव्ह नेक्रोसिस हे नेक्रोसिसचे टाईप सांगितले आणि जी नैसर्गिक जो क्षय होत असतो त्या पॉप्टॉसिस मध्ये सुद्धा त्याची नेक्स्ट इन्क्युबेशन होतं तेव्हा कॅन्सरेजीने सेल निर्माण होतात असं शास्त्र सांगतं परंतु या दोन्ही अवस्थांमध्ये वात या वाताचे आणि त्याचे नॉर्मल किंवा त्याचे फिजिओलॉजिकल फंक्शन कंटिन्यू करण्यासाठी आवश्यक असणारे गुण आणि जेव्हा ते इरिव्हर्सिबल म्हणजे जातात तेव्हा वातांच्या गुणांचा त्याच्यामध्ये जे काही चेंजेस झालेत त्यांच्या कर्मानुसार या दोन्ही गोष्टींचा विचार करणं फार आवश्यक आहे कारण कफ आणि पित्त यांच्या अनुषंगाने होणाऱ्या सगळ्या क्रिया या वाताच्या गतीशिवाय कधीच पॉसिबल नसतात कफाची आणि पित्ताची जेवढी काही नॉर्मल क्रिया आणि अबनॉर्मल क्रिया या वाताच्याच अनुषंगाने होतात त्याच्यामुळे या हे जे काही चेंजेस आहेत स्पेशली इरिव्हर्सिबल चेंजेस त्याच्यामध्ये वाताच्या गुणांचा विचार करणं हे अत्यावश्यक ठरतोफी हायपरट्रॉफी हायपरप्लासिया मेटाप्लासिया याच्यामध्ये साईज आकार अशा प्रकारे म्हणजे वजन वाढणं एखाद्या गोष्टीचं किंवा आकार वाढणं त्यातले घटक वाढणं त्यातले नंबर्स वाढणं ही वेगवेगळ्या प्रकारची वृद्धीची ही हे पॅटर्न्स आहेत आणि या पॅटर्न्स नुसार नक्की कुठली महाभूतांमध्ये अल्ट्रेशन आहे कुठल्या गुणांमध्ये अल्ट्रेशन आहे हे बघणं आवश्यक आहे ओके सो जर तिथे रिटेन्शन होत आहे तर रिटेन्शन कुठल्या कारणांमुळे होत आहे किंवा अक्युमलेशन होत आहे जे आपण स्वेलिंग म्हणतो किंवा एडिमा म्हणतो अक्युमलेशन होत आहे तर नक्की कुठल्या प्रकारे कुठल्या प्रकारचे म्हणजे रक्त रक्तदृष्टीचे लक्षणं जास्त आहेत उदक व स्रोत दृष्टीचा आपण ज्या शोध म्हणतो उदक व स्रोत दृष्टीची लक्षणं जास्त आहेत म्हणजे आपली जो काही एकंदर क्रिया किंवा आपल्या जो काही आयुर्वेदाचा जो काही विचार आहे जो द्रव्य गुण कर्म यांच्या या साखळीत बांधलेला आहे ती साखळी बरोबर या 
सर्व बेसिक पॅथोलॉजी च्या ज्या काही हे आहेत थॉट्स आहेत किंवा जे काही कॉन्सेप्ट आहेत त्यांना बरोबर आपण को रिलेट करू शकतो जर आपण गुणांचा आणि कर्मांचा विचार केला तर ओके येस इथे रोपण ही क्रिया महत्वाची आहे सर्टन टाईप इज रिप्लेस्ड बाय अंदर सेल टाईप सो जेव्हा इन्फ्लमेशन किंवा अडिमा अडिमा पण म्हणतो तेव्हा शोथ आपण म्हणतो शोथ आणि शोथ या दोन कन्सेप्ट आपल्या आयुर्वेदामध्ये आहेत व्याधी स्वरूपात लक्षण स्वरूपात तसं सुद्धा एडिमा सुद्धा बऱ्याचदा मॉडर्न मध्ये बघताना जसं आपण त्याचे पॉझिटिव्ह फॅक्टर्स किंवा हे त्याचे सिम्टम्स जे सांगितलेले आहेत आणि ते पॉझिटिव्ह मेन सांगितलेले आहेत किडनी प्रॉब्लेम्स आहेत या सगळ्या ज्या काही पॅथोलॉजिकल कंडिशन आहेत हे सगळे डिसिजेस आहेत या सगळ्या डिसिजेस आपल्या शोथ जी संकल्पना आहे त्या शोथाच्या संकल्पनेमध्ये त्वक दृष्टी उदक व स्रोतस दृष्टी रस व स्रोतस दृष्टी मांस मांस व स्रोतस दृष्टी या ज्या काही स्रोतस दृष्टी आणि त्यांच्या तर्कमता आहेत यांच्याशीच निगडीत आहेत यांचा आपण को रिलेशन केलं की ज्या काही स्टेजेस आहेत त्या हार्ट फेलियर मध्ये जे काही पॉझिटिव्ह फॅक्टर्स आहेत किंवा जी काही प्राथमिक दृष्टी आहे जी काही दृष्टींची पूर्ण टेबल किंवा जो काही क्रम आहे त्या क्रमाचा विचार पांच महाभौतिक संघटनाच्या जे काही त्याच्यामध्ये होणारी विघुणता आहे ती त्याचं अल्ट्रेशन आहे या विचारांनी केल्यानंतर आपल्याला त्याच्यातले नक्की आयुर्वेदिक पॉइंट ऑफ व्ह्यू काय काय चेंजेस होतात किंवा कशी पॅथोलॉजी त्या केस मध्ये घडत जाते हे आपल्याला व्यवस्थित को रिलेट करता येईल हे सगळे जे कॉजेस आहेत ते कॉजेस वेगवेगळे आहेत ज्यांचं रूपांतरण शोधामध्ये होतं परंतु या ड्युरिंग या सगळ्या कॉजेस मध्ये आपलं जे आयुर्वेदिक प्रिन्सिपल आहे शोध निर्मिती करणारे जे घटक आहेत यादीचे घटक आहेत दोष आणि दुष्ट आणि त्याचं एक विशिष्ट सामान्य संप्राप्ती आहे ही संप्राप्ती तुम्हाला या सगळ्या प्रॉब्लेम्स मध्ये किंवा या सगळ्या कंडिशन मध्ये तुम्हाला कमी अधिक स्वरूपात बघायला मिळेल त्या त्या संप्राप्तीचे कमी अधिक स्वरूपात ज्या गुणांमुळे ती कमी अधिक स्वरूपात होते आहे आणि त्या गुणांना गुणांचे जे काही त्या गुणांचे हेतुसेवन कॉस्ट आहे त्या पॉझिटिव्ह फॅक्टर्स पहिल्यांदा विड्रॉल करून त्याप्रमाणे त्या ते गुण रिपेअर केले की तुम्हाला याच्यामध्ये लाक्षणिक कसे म्हणण्यापेक्षा तुम्हाला याच्यामध्ये उपशमाची या व्याधीमध्ये हळूहळू तुम्हाला रिझल्ट मिळायला सुरुवात प्रत्येक जे प्रकार आहेत याच्या प्रत्येक प्रकारामध्ये जी काही शोधाची जो दोष दुष गण आहे किंवा संग्रह आहे हा प्रत्येक संग्रहाचा तुम्हाला वेगवेगळ्या पद्धतीने तुम्हाला याचा किडनी म्हणा किंवा प्रोटीन या सगळ्या मॅकॅनिझम मध्ये तुम्हाला रक्त त्वचा मांस उदक व स्रोत सृष्टी पित्त कफ या सगळ्यांचा कमी अधिक प्रमाणात मला इन्व्हॉल्वमेंट दिसेल म्हणजे वेगवेगळ्या गुणांत झालेली दिसेल सो ती आपण को रिलेट करू शकतो आणि ती आपण प्रत्येक केस नुसार हिस्ट्रीच्या वेळेला ती को रिलेट करायची आहे ओके ॲक्च्युली आजच्या लेक्चरमध्ये तुम्हाला बेसिक पॅथोलॉजीमध्ये कुठल्या गोष्टी आपल्याला क्लिनिकल पॉईंट ऑफ व्ह्यू इम्पॉर्टंट आहेत ते बघणं परिष्ट दृष्टीने बघणं आणि त्याचप्रमाणे आयुर्वेदिक सूत्रांच्या बेसिसवर या बेसिक पॅथोलॉजीचा कसा विचार करू शकतो आपण त्याचं डिरेक्शन कारण या प्रत्येक टॉपिक इट सेल्फ एक मोठं मोठं लेक्चरचं टॉपिक आहे परंतु मी हा जो पोर्शनचा पूर्ण सिलेबसचा हा भाग आहे हा आज बऱ्यापैकी कम्प्लीट करायचा प्रयत्न केला तुम्हाला डिरेक्शन देऊ की कसा विचार केला पाहिजे बाकी तर तुम्हाला सगळी थिअरी किंवा सगळं जे काही टेक्स्ट आहे तुम्हाला वेगवेगळ्या पुस्तकांमध्ये मिळेल परंतु नेहमी आयुर्वेदाची मुलं पॅरलली चालताना दिसतात की एक भाग आहे मॉडर्न सायन्सचा भाग वाचतात आणि आयुर्वेदाचा भाग वाचतात परंतु जेव्हा पेशंट तुमच्याकडे येतो तेव्हा ते ठराविक प्रकारची विकृती ही मॉडर्न टर्म्स मध्ये घेऊन येतो बऱ्याचदा त्यांच्याकडे हातात पॅथोलॉजिकल इन्व्हेस्टिगेशन असतात त्यांच्याकडे हिस्ट्री असते आणि त्यांना जी मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम सांगितले जाते जे काही सध्या समाजामध्ये प्रचलित गोष्ट आहे की मॉडर्न सायन्स त्याच्या टर्म्समध्ये ते आपल्याला सांगत असतात पण मग त्या टर्म्समध्ये आपण पंचमहाभूतिक गुण किंवा पंचमहाभूतिक क्रिया पंचमहाभूतिक जे काही घटना आहेत त्या 
स्रोतासाठी संदर्भातल्या या कशा कोरिलेट करायच्या ह्या आपल्या जोपर्यंत कळत नाही तोपर्यंत त्याच्यातली आपल्याला विकृतीचं स्वरूप आणि विकृतीची लेवल आपल्याला कळणार नाही आणि त्या विकृतीच्या स्वरूप आणि लेवलवरच तुमची सगळी उपाययोजना किंवा चिकित्सा किंवा निदान परिवर्जनापासून अगदी चिकित्सेपर्यंत सगळे मोड्स हे डिपेंडेंट असतात त्यामुळे जेव्हा जेव्हा एखादा पेशंट तुमच्याकडे जर त्यांच्या बेसिक फिजिओलॉजीमध्ये काही अल्टरेशन घेऊन येतो तेव्हा तेव्हा कुठकुठल्या गुणांनी ते कर्म डिस्टर्ब झालेलं आहे नॉर्मल बॉडीचं कर्म जे आहे फिजिओलॉजी आहे ते कुठल्या गुणांमुळे डिस्टर्ब झालेली आहे याचा विचार करून कुठल्या पॉझिटिव्ह फॅक्टर्समुळे डिस्टर्ब झाली आहे याचा विचार करून नक्की पंचमहाभौतिक संघटनांमध्ये किंवा दोषांच्या गुणांमध्ये काय चेंजेस आहेत त्याच्यामुळे कर्म चेंज झालंय हे बघणं आणि ते कोरिलेट करणं हे क्लिनिशियन म्हणून आपलं काम आहे अँड दॅट इज द ऍक्च्युअल ऍक्च्युअल काय म्हणतात त्याला तो खरा उपयोग आहे या बेसिक पॅथोलॉजी ज्ञानाचा आपल्या आयुर्वेदिक प्रॅक्टिस ओके सो थँक्यू व्हेरी मच इफ देअर इज एनी क्वेश्चन लेट मी नो